showers and sighing. Not with disbelief in my body, but in disbelief in myself. I traced my finger over flaws, and each, with each flaw, a new thought flooded my head. Round face, eyes sore, large arms, fatty cake, bulges stomach, calorie cream, large legs, thunder thighs. I was convinced that not only was this weight unescapable, but words like love were too, sm too small for a girl so large. It took two more years of sleepless nights, an unmoving motivation, and bullying before anything worth mentioning began to happen. To my parents, I was becoming picky and unthankful when it came to food. To my friends, I was a hopeless runner, and to strangers, I was a lost cause. I continued to look in the mirror, but as the girl I saw shrank, my thoughts began to fill their place, still inflating me to my original size. 20 more pounds to lose, 30 more if you want to look like that girl, 40 if you want affection from the opposite sex. But the number on the scale stopped moving. No matter how hard I tried to push myself, it stayed in its place. It was screaming to me, you are good enough now. You don't have to go any further. And I did not listen. I just gave up. It was not until I was 15 did I finally realize that I had been good enough all along. Unlike middle school, boys held doors open for me. Clothes at stores that were not plus size began to fit, and names in my head ceased to exist. So I returned myself to that mirror and traced my body one more time. My thighs are muscular from tennis. My stomach is feminine, and it is my boyfriend's favorite yes. spot to lay his head. My face is photogenic, and my hips are something any man should be thankful for. Yes. This is the first to have finally processed and have been accepted by every cell of my being. A revolution of thoughts. 60 pounds gone, the number on the scale can only give me a numerical relationship with gravity. It cannot explain to me that I am beautiful, acceptable to society, or loving. Only I can do that. Woo!